Good Sunday morning. Voice a little crackly, right? Yeah, I know. Huh. Just getting going. Hey, it's kind of cool, but it's not as cold as I thought. So it's the Sunday morning Leesburg Auto Show meet time. And today it's only supposed to be like 40 and windy. But it's not real cold air, so it's actually kind of okay. So I think I'm going to take the cars up to town. And we're going to go do some car show time. And hey, what do I drive today, right? Yeah, do I drive the Mach E, the Ranger, the Forerunner? What do we take today on the adventures to the Leesburg Car Show? Now, yesterday, I got my Tremor front med flaps done up. Gave up on the rear ones because I spent the day yesterday putting my uh, Bronco exhaust on. If you saw that video, so follow me along. Hey, I think I know what I'm going to take. I'm going to take my Mustang Mach 1. I haven't driven that thing at all. I get things out of the way. Hey, now, did the exhaust yesterday, if anybody's following me. So let's hear this thing this morning. Right, time to get into the Mach 1, which I barely have driven. And wow, I've learned so much about this vehicle. Wow, so I have learned so much about this vehicle. Huh. And it's from the car and driver. Car and driver actually uh, gave me a heads up. You know, one thing about this car is it's so cool how you've got the different mode options here where you can go to sport mode, track mode, all right? But what's really neat about it is you can go to your exhaust mode. Let's go to sport, okay? And let's go here to exhaust, track, okay? So I really like that. And I really like, see, watch the, the, the uh, instrument, so it's on sport, you know, we were right. So you're normal, look at the, uh, the, you know, the digital, you know, look at the, the instrumentation. So when I go now to sport, watch what happens. So I think this is so cool. You know, the digital, you know, look at the, the instrumentation. So when I go now to sport, watch what happens. So I think this is so cool. All right. Clutching it, right? Bad back, clutching all that stuff. Where's the kid? There's the kid. Whoop, look at that. I just stalled it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when your back's killing you. Probably not the best vehicle to take of the day. All right, we're running late, but he's always, always projects. What do we get for breakfast for today, right? All right, we are off getting our Panera breakfast. This is a Tremec six-speed tranny, and oh my gosh! So here's the thing. You know, I owned that Mustang Bullet, and you know, I just never realized that this Mach One is such a uh, unique setup. I mean. I'm telling you, I was never fixated this Mach 1. Now you'd say, well, why weren't you? Well, I had a Mustang Bullet. So why did I want to get a Mach 1? I mean, I already have a GT350, GT500. I got a, a Bullet, which my daughter just loved that. So how am I going to part with that? You know, how am I going to, you know, take that vehicle and get rid of it? When I know my daughter is going to be like, Dad, no, I want that bullet. So, and here's the thing. Now, knowing so much more about this Mach 1, I would have been more like, no way. You know, this is a, this is like a Shelby product. So, you know, for me, my daughter, unfortunately, crashed my bullet and I lost that. And, you know, was I bummed? Yes. Yeah, I mean, is she bummed? Yeah, I mean, she'll never forget that for the rest of her life. She was really hoping to have that car be hers one day. 
you know, you know the stories of Mustangs. There's families out there that have, you know, granddad's Mustang from the 60s. So, yeah, could that have played out with that bullet in my daughter's lifetime? It probably would have. So, you know, the reason I'm talking about this is, you know, I, I bought this Mach 1. Unbeknownst to me, really, all the uh, capabilities and features and just really how badass this car is. It's probably like, oh, God, here we go. Guy's a Mustang guy, and now he's talking badass. No, what I'm saying to you is this vehicle I saw released for the 2021 model year, and, you know, I kind of looked at it, and I was never fixated on it because I couldn't justify having four Mustangs. You know, there's just no way. Like I said, if for me to part with my GT350, GT500 for the Mach 1, even though 350 now, I don't know find out what I'm finding out about this vehicle. So, see that rep matching? That is just so uh, neat in these cars. You don't understand what that is. A lot of you don't understand, you know, how you rev up the motor to match the RPMs to the speeds of your car so that when you put it in gear, if you go from fifth gear to second gear or third gear, you don't get that, you know, abrupt, uh, you know, type of uh, shift. Focus here on driving, right? Like, yeah, focus on driving. So, uh, so, anyways, you know, so my daughter would not have, you know, I wouldn't have done that. I'm not going to do that. So, I didn't get rid of the bullet to get a Mach 1. I never would have done that. So, I never would have bought a Mach 1 had it been the bullet. Now, I can't say never, but I never would have bought a new one. I mean, that was because this is the last year they're building them. 2022 is the last run of them. And be so lucky to get one, kind of. I mean, I know there's you can get them out there. So, uh, birds in the road. Anyway, so here, you know, so here we are. Me driving my brand new 2021, you know, borderline leftover, but it's not a leftover. It was built in December, and it had a very high ADM on it. The reason this car never sold the Coon Sterling Ford is it had a 10K ADM on it, and yeah. You know, so, I mean, that's, uh, it didn't sell. People would just rather order one and get one 2% below invoice from Granger or, or who knows, you know. People just didn't, you know, it was a dead of winter. So, a lot of variables for this vehicle to be put on a lot, uh, you know, and this, it probably didn't even come in until uh, probably January. So, so anyways, so what I'm really, really trying to lead up here to this Mach 1 is I never realized that this Mach 1 had so many features on it that the bullet didn't, you know? You say, okay, what do you mean by that? Well, six-speed tra traffic transmission. The bullet didn't have that. The heavy-duty cooling uh, system for the transmission engine, I guess you could say, uh, this vehicle or the bullet for really tracking this vehicle. This vehicle has bigger wheels and tires. This vehicle actually has like a Shelby component in it for the front uh, camber or something in the suspension. And this vehicle has what I believe is borderline my GT500 exhaust tips. That bullet just had black rear exhaust tips. And uh, so and that's something I'd be curious about. With this, with this uh, six-speed tranny, if it's geared differently, how the zero to 60 speeds on this or that bullet, because it, the bullet was not very fast. I don't think it would be much different, personally, because it's a 480 horsepower, 20 horsepower more than the regular 5.0 Coyote motor and all the GT 5.0 Mustangs. So this got what they say, the Mustang bullet, you know, upgrade motor, if you need to know what mean by that. So you got the exhaust tips, and then, of course, you had the Mach 1, you know, front grill theme it's the fighter jet type of theme you know vehicle that's why they call it fighter jet gray on the car so but here's the thing for me you know once again i'm just like well you know a little bigger wheel package that's really nice but is it really that much radical than a bullet okay so i really didn't dig that deep in this vehicle before i bought it because i was more on the page hey i had the bullet what can I get in place of the bullet as a Magna Ride? Because the Magna Ride is really what I want. And in all sincereness, if there had been a GT50 manual with the Magna Ride package on it, I probably would have bought one of those. I, wouldn't even, I probably wouldn't even go on for the Mach 1. 
So that's another very important feature I look for in the Mustang product is the Magnaride. It's a huge difference in how this vehicle feels. I can't emphasize enough, any vehicle you buy, like my new Mach-E's, my new Ford Mach-E's, I am so happy I was able to get the Mach-E GT PE Performance Edition because that has the Magnaride. And this Magnaride, you know, it's an electronic type of uh, shock system in the car, as far as I know, so we could clarify that a little bit more. But basically, it helps the vehicle absorb the bumps, and the car absorbs the bumps, the shocks absorb the bumps, but you don't take the bumps. So the car hits a bump, and instead of like, like, or, or like a hole, not like a hole in the road, but there's imperfections in the road, instead of the car going ka clunk you know, the car goes more like kaboom. You know, so it's a whole different, it's a whole different feel. It's a radical difference. And I live in vehicles, so I can tell that that type of ride. And I don't like Mustangs. You know, you know and don't take this the wrong way because you know, not everybody has money to buy nice things. But for me, uh, if I didn't have the Magnum ride in my Mustang, I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy the Mustang. To me, it's just, you know, can you upgrade suspension? Yes, you can. So there's an option for you. But for me, I'd just rather buy the car already ready to go. And I want the Magnum ride because it's an available option. It's a little pricey, but it's well worth the money. So, you know, going back to this Mach 1, here, here's an article that Car Driver did back in February, you know, prior to my daughter crashing my bullet. And it's called the, uh, the Lightning Lap 2022, I believe. It's a great uh, article. Go to Car and Driver, go to YouTube, look up the Lightning Lap 2022, like all the top, you know, uh, cars in the market that, you know, race at the uh, Virginia Raceway down there in, uh, you know, the southern part of Virginia, VI, 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 I can't think of the name of the track, but it's a, it's like a four mile long track, I believe. It's one of the longest tracks in the country, and they just take these cars, all these, you know, they take a Mercedes AMG, you know, two-to-war coupe, they take, I believe, a Lotus or a Bentley, and they take the Cadillac CTSV, and they... And they take the Ford Mach 1. And so they do all these track times. And I think it was 12 cars or maybe 20. I just, you know, sorry. Too much going on. Go watch the video and go to the mark 17 minutes, 10 seconds to see the Mach 1. Well, the Mach 1 at that track actually outdid the GT350R. Yeah, did you just hear me? Hey, GT350 guys, and here's the thing. I own a GT350, but the Mach 1, if you if you watch this video and you read about this Mach 1, car and drivers calling this thing Mustangs, you know, the last generation, because the Mustangs didn't redesign from the S550 series to the S650 series in 2023, 2024 model year. The, I think the big reveals later this summer or something like that. So I think there's only one, I think there's only maybe two more years, you know, 2022 production is car in 2023. And I think then it's go to 2024 and you get the new S650. But the whole point is car and drivers saying that this Mustang Mach 1, bang for the buck in the Mustang li lineup is the best yet. That, that, you know, Ford has mastered, you know, has finessed this Mach 1 where it's out driving the GT350 that has like 40 more horsepower than the Mach 1 because the Mach 1's at 480. The Voodoo motor, Voodoo motor is like at 520, something like that. And uh, and so, you know, here's the thing. When I read that article, it truly woke up my eyes to realize that holy crow, you know, this vehicle is more than I ever even realized it was. I mean, it gave me a whole new appreciation to this vehicle. And, you know, and I'm not lying. If you go to the Ford Mach 1 uh, forum, I actually talk about this and I posted all this and I'm like, wow, I am totally taken back by how this car, you know, I never realized what I had purchased. So, wow. You know, so this Mach 1, let's see what he's at the car show. All right, here we come up to the car show. We hit the Panera this morning. A little further, I should have started. All right, coming up here on the car show, let's see how many people are freezing their butt off. Not a bad showing so far, not bad. There's the Mustang guys. So, 
get up here to Panera, get our food, and head to the car show. You guys just downshift this car. Oh my gosh, the rev matching. That is so much fun. I mean, this, I mean, I have not even driven this car. It's 175 miles on it. And I mean, I have barely driven this vehicle. I mean, that's usually what I do in one day in my other vehicles. All right, got the kid in the back there, right? In the Challenger. Gold Rush, we're not even talking about that now, are we? Like, hey, buddy, you bought a Gold Rush. You bought a Gold Rush Challenger. You don't even talk about that anymore, do you? You know, it's incredible. I will tell you this. The Mustang definitely took away the fun factor of my Mopar products. You know, I'll be the first to tell you that. that the uh, Mustangs took away the fun factor of my Mopar products. And I know any Dodge guys are on the forum or any Dodge Mopar guy, they're going to be like, you're on drugs. Well, like, fine. I mean, I, I don't, you know, in all sincereness, I am so happy other people like things I, I don't like. I love that. I don't want everybody today at the car show to have a Mach 1. Yeah, it's five of them are sitting there, right? So uh, for me, you know, this is all about the fun factor. And that's the way I look at it. It's all about the fun factor. So if you're not having fun with your vehicle, then get rid of it. <laughs> all right, got my coffee. Now look at the exhaust tips on this. Are those as big as my GT500? Maybe not. Yeah, kid's getting cold. I got You got a jacket in here, I think. Kid's getting cold. <laughs> All right. All right, coming up to the... Look at that. I'm not even going very fast, and it's rev matching. See, the RPMs go up without you touching the gas pedal. All right, I'll be amazed. Look, it's 38 degrees. Here's a guy that talks all the time about don't drive your car with summer performance tires when it's 30 degrees out, right? Laugh all you want, but it's cold. I mean, it's 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 the wind. Uh, you know, I'll be amazed. This place gets very full today. I mean, it's pretty light so far. So yeah, look at that. There's the bat limo mobile. <laughs> Yeah, it's light. Very light. Can you blame everybody? I mean, I can't blame them. It's too damn cold. Burr. Yep, but you know, it won't break my heart because staying up here for two hours out in the cold, forget that. Everybody's already like, Burr, look at that. That's pretty badass. Here we go. We get right up the front line today. How about that idea? All right, hey, here is the Rivian. The gentleman here has brought to the car show. It's the first edition. And wow, to say the least. He uh, he claims that he ordered in 2019. And being it's the first edition model, he's claiming that, you know, he got a really good price in this truck. This truck now, he says he got it for 75 grand. And this would now probably be more like 85 or 90. He also claims that if you want one of these, it's maybe a four month wait, which that's pretty impressive. I didn't realize that. You know, he says they're really ramping up the uh, production and that you could, uh, you could literally order one today and probably have one in four months. It's cold out here. It's not really a great show. Just the wind, just too much going on. But I'm sure if anybody, a lot of people out here don't even know what this is, believe it or not, which I'm kind of, uh, not taken back, but at the same time, this is such a new vehicle, and it's you know it's a pretty it's a pretty big vehicle. And it kind of has a look where it's not big, but at the same time, it does you know have that footprint look. So uh, it's very interesting here. And you gentlemen, 
gone to get a coffee and I can't get inside the car, as you can tell. But. So, you know, something about the Rivian product is, if you look at this product, the gentleman here and I are talking about it, and we're saying, you know, how you bring a new car to the market? You know, Apple's trying to do it. There's, you know, now you've got a lot of different, uh, you know, companies out there. And if, but if you look at things like the tires, okay, that's a that's a worldwide product. The the, the brake caliper and the uh, the disc, you know, that's a that's a that's probably being used in some other vehicle. Yeah. You know, so if you kind of start going through the the actual you know product on this vehicle, there's so many things that are you know being used on other vehicles, the shocks. Yeah, you kind of you know, part, so it's so many shared parts yeah. today that you know to kind of like start from the ground up I don't think that's how it really plays really out fair, yeah. you know what I mean I think that today more than ever mm -hmm. you can bring a car to the product to the market faster because you can utilize so many other manufacturers products into your product yeah. Yeah. you know and uh, especially the battery technology now and you know so it's a really you know for me but I own, I would own one of these you know there's no doubt I mean and I wish the gentleman was still here because what's the range you know, it's just a this is a ninety kilowatt. So I'm a Mustang Mach E guy now. I just bought two electric Mustang oh, yeah. Mustang vehicles, and those are really 200, 250 mile range vehicles. I'm learning a he lot. Said, he said this is just a four, but he, he says it's probably more like three fifty, three twenty. Right. So this, good. yeah. So this has to have a massive battery pack. And he said that now they're coming out with an option for a second battery pack so that you can increase your range and the pack it will not be used. Has a right, right, right. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I talked about that for years. Where you have, you, you know, you go to a service station and you have a battery pack that you can slide inside out, put in your vehicle. So you do that, just like you're exchanging propane. Yeah, you know what I mean. On the tank, or right, like, right, right, right. I think that's where it's going. Is you have a you have a main battery pack and like a fast, quick, replaceable battery pack. You know, so so that's interesting. Four hundred miles. So that's I have a Ford F one fifty Lightning truck that's being built in May, and that's the same thing. It's got the capability of three hundred plus miles. You know, but that's a huge battery pack, and these things weigh so much. So like this vehicle here, you know, is this a seven thousand pound vehicle? Is this an eight thousand pound vehicle? Let me share something with you. The, I mean, the Jeep's coming out with a hybrid. And they said it had an eight hundred pounds just for their battery. Right. Right. That's yeah. A hybrid. So yeah. Like right. So I have a, the new Ford Mach E Mustang. That's five thousand pounds. Yeah. That little that's a you know, it's an SUV. Right. So the new Hummer that's coming out, the new Hummer that's hitting the market, that thing's like nine thousand. 10,000 pounds for that vehicle. I mean, that's insane to, because these battery packs just weigh so much. The gentleman's being very nice. Let me, uh, oh my gosh, that is so cool. Look at that. Wow. That is really cool. That middle uh, entertainment and wow. There it is. There's that little side panel there, and that's where. No, just one side. Oh, here's the key question: What's the weight? I bet you think seven. This is probably eight thousand pound vehicle. Okay, well, is this eight thousand pounds? Oh uh, yeah, it's about eight thousand pounds. Yeah. This is eight thousand five hundred thirty-two pounds. So you put your gear in it, your family in it. This is a nine thousand pound vehicle going down the road. Wow. Look at this here. Gentleman's being very nice. Let us sit. Look at this here. This is so cool. Technology, man. Anybody that's anti-electric, you're kidding yourself. You know, the advance in this technology is just incredible. So you think the range is 350, would you say? It's advertised at That's awesome. Have you charged this yet? Yes. All right, there comes Batman and Robin. Wide turns. Yeah, wide turns. Oh, look at that. It's squats. Wait a second here. Hey, do that again. We got to see that again. Look at this here. Something squats down. What's that all about? 
So, oh, there he goes. There he goes. Airbags. That is pretty cool. Raises up. Oh, looks like we got the mini club hanging and getting ready to hang out of here. Wonder if we got some burping going on. Mini, you know, big old exhaust. You know, I was gonna buy one of those years ago, but correct me if I'm wrong, you'll be watching my YouTube channel, being that I don't think the fuel mileage is like that great. And I thought sacrificing the size and I got great fuel mileage would be awesome. But I don't think you do. Well, there you go. There's the big bang, right? All right, just leave the car show, and wow, man, you know, I get to talking, and I start talking a lot, but not not a great show, I mean, it's just so cold, a lot of people uh, made the decision to leave early, if you know, you understand that. Yeah, so, I mean, just, brr, it's cold, 38 degrees out my uh, computer here, but, you know, nice show overall, you know, I mean, great people, it's a great a great way to meet people and talk to people a lot of you know, it's just really good environment and having that rivian show up i was really cool and uh i had a lot of compliments on my mach one here and geez so much information talking to people about this and that and that and this so you know i don't know kind of was going over my mach one here and sharing my excitement about this vehicle and it has a lot more to it than i even realized and uh and that's a heck of a statement right yeah, so anyway, so, you know, it's the Sunday morning conversations, which if you're uh, following my channel, you'll see I did a lot of videos, more videos, and wow, this car is just, these Mustangs, they're just so sporty. I mean, you know, until you really drive one of these cars, and, eh, you know, it's all about what package you have, you know, what setup you have. I mean, it's all, there's so many variables to it vehicles just like challengers l cats you know if you don't have the right package then it's not the same type of vehicle you know and that's what's that's what's so neat about owning you know vehicles and driving so many different vehicles they all have their own personalities and you know which is unique to each one and that's what just you know that's my addiction to these cars is out of each vehicle i just kind of get you know that fun factor at a different level of what's you know pretty neat and uh and that's why you see them in lots of different vehicles because i enjoy driving different vehicles wow this transmission in this thing is just really nice so uh so anyways uh just try to kind of keep it simple today or did i keep it simple right i mean just so cold my hands are freezing Can you hear that if you don't get the right gear Hear that thing do its little rev match, which it's all about the rev matching, right? So I'm sure people are going, What rev match? Yeah, so, anyways, Sunday morning conversations. You know, I was talking about my Mach 1 from heading out. Can't I can't emphasize enough how excited, how excited I am about this Mach 1, and I got a lot of you know people come up interested in talking about it and learning more about the car. And you know, I've learned a lot about it this past week. And, you know, this is one of these cars where a day like today, I mean, it's not really the best of weather because it's not really that warm out. It should be a lot more fun if it was like 70 degrees out and had the, had the windows down. But it's just a really fun car to drive. And, uh, and which, yeah, am I going to keep on driving today? I'm going to go back home and do my projects. I've got that Ford F-250. I did my front install mud flaps. Those Gator gator backs or gator mud flaps and uh those things are really nice but i gotta do the rear on my f-250 now and uh that's a little bit of a project and oh my gosh my back i don't know if you watched my video yesterday i mean my back's killing me it's just one of those things where i pinch the nerve and it usually takes two three days for me kind of at least to work it off if not more and today believe it or not it seems borderline worse than yesterday but Anybody watch my videos be like, yeah, man, you freaking did all that, you know, work yesterday. Are you surprised that your back's in 
not better shape today, and not worse, but you know, that Bronco AWE exhaust install, oh my gosh, I just love that exhaust on that Bronco. So I just had to, uh, I just had to do it. I just had to put it on. So now the debate is, I'm getting ready to go to Florida, and I'm like, what do I take? I mean, I think I'm gonna take the Bronco, but typically I take down like my truck and trailer, so that's a whole other adventure coming your way. And uh, hey, my phone is telling me, hey man, my phone's telling me, you, you just talk too much, you're killing me, the battery's dying. All right, so I've kind of been saying this and that, you know, but hey, tell you what, the electric revolution, you know, me owning the mach -E's now, I'm really loving those cars. And yeah, and you know, the fuel mileage, electric mileage, however you want to classify it, the kilowatt mileage. I mean, that is really pretty cool right now that I'm learning a lot about my mach -E's and, and at the same time, yeah, am I saving a lot of money right now? I sure am. I mean, I just live behind the wheel of cars, so that's pretty cool, but there's just so much new technology coming down the pike, and I think it's unfortunate there are a lot of anti-electric vehicle people. I think that they look at it the wrong way where, you know, it's so much more about the technology, the advancement of transportation, and, you know, and why why are you gonna be against electric vehicles? I mean, I get where some feel like it's, you know, an agenda and it's a force, but it's we're not there yet. I mean, I'm sorry, you know, we're still off many, many years. So to me, it's more about manufacturers trying to uh, bring a new product and a better product to enable you to be able to, uh, you know, go places and do things uh, using a different way of uh, getting that there by a different way of energy. I mean, that's what it's all about. So to me, you know, I'm going to continue to learn about the electric. As I learn more, I'll be, you know, sharing more. And I talked to other individuals, and there's one guy, Electrified America YouTube channel, he's telling me about that the guy's doing. Uh, retro electrification of cars, which I'd love to do that. If my brother lived up north here, I would be taking some retro cars and electrifying them. I mean, I would just love to have that type of project to put a crate electric motor in an older car and, and make it electric. It's just a challenge and it's just something different. I just think it'd be neat. And uh, so I think that's going to be a big trend, you know, for me. You know, instead of being called Ice Age TV, you know, I create EV Age TV and, uh, you know, electric vehicle Age TV. And then that way uh, I'd be sharing with you all my car builds. And that's a huge thing where guys are getting a lot of followers to that. And I get it. I don't disagree. That's a great idea. So uh, I'm glad everybody uh, watches my videos and, you know, and tells me what they think and don't think. And, Blah blah blah. And I get it's Sunday, and it's just weird. Got the Sunday drivers out. We're just just uh, you, you drive a car, you understand. You know what people do. All right, heading back in. So, anyways, just wanted to share with you my Sunday morning car show adventure and my Mach One, not Mach E, car adventure. I just want to keep on driving. You know, I just want to enjoy my, I mean, this one, this is a car here that I really am trying to make it a keeper car. And, you know, this Mach 1, this to me, I feel where we are in today's ice age. I just think this is a vehicle that if you just keep it low mileage and you don't do anything to it, this vehicle is going to just be so valuable. I just think that we're really coming to that point in time of age of the ice age to EV age that, you know, these are going to be the sought-after vehicles as time progresses. So, um, anyways, thanks for watching my Ice Age TV YouTube channel, and uh, hope uh, some of this information today helped you learn something once again. Have a great day.